Zeno the Isaurian, Latin, Flavius Zeno Augustus, Greek, Zenon c. 425 the 9th of April 491 originally named Tarasis Codes Arausembladidiotes was Eastern Roman emperor from 474 to 475 and again from 476 to 491 Domestic revolts and religious dissension plagued his reign which nevertheless succeeded to some extent in foreign issues his reign saw the end of the Western Roman Empire following the deposition of Romulus Augustus and the death of Julius Nepos, but he contributed much to stabilizing the Eastern Empire. In ecclesiastical history, Zeno is associated with the Henoticon or instrument of union, promulgated by him and signed by all the Eastern bishops, with the design of solving the Monophysite controversy. Biography. <inaudible> <inaudible> Rise to power <inaudible> Early life Zeno's original name was Tarasis, and more accurately Tarasicodissa in his native Isaurian language Latin, Trascalisaeus. Tarasis was born in Isauria, at Rusumblada, later renamed Xenonopolis in Zeno's honor. His father was called Codiza, as attested by his patronymic, Tarasicodisa, his mother Lalis, his brother Longinus. Tarasis had a wife, Arcadia, whose name indicates a relationship with the Constantinopolitan aristocracy, and whose statue was erected near the baths of Arcadius, along the steps that led to Tapoi. Near Eastern and other Christian traditions maintain that Zeno had two daughters, Hilaria and Theopiste, who followed a religious life, but historical sources attest the existence of only one son by Arcadia, called Zenon. According to ancient sources, Zeno's prestigious career he had fought against Attila in 447 to defend Constantinople and been consul the following year was the reason why another Isaurian officer, Tarasis, chose the Greek name Zeno when he married into the imperial family, thus being known as Zeno when he rose to the throne. Some modern historians suggest that the Isaurian general Zeno was the father of the emperor, but there is no consensus about this, and other sources suggest that Tarasis was a member of Zeno's entourage. The Isaurians were a people who lived inland from the Mediterranean coast of Anatolia, in the core of the Taurus Mountains generally what is now the Konya, Bozkir area of Turkey. Like most borderland tribes, they were looked upon as barbarians by the Romans even though they had been Roman subjects for more than five centuries. However, being Orthodox Christians rather than Arians, as the Goths and other Germanic tribes were, they were not formally barred from the throne. According to some scholars, in the mid 460s, the Eastern Roman Emperor, Leo I, wanted to balance the weight of the Germanic component of the army, whose leader was the Alan Magister Militum Aspar. He thought that Tarasis and his Isaurians could be that counterweight, and called him, with many Isaurians, to Constantinople. This interpretation, however, has been contested. By the mid-460s, Arcadia and Zeno had been living at Constantinople for some time, where Lalis and Longinus also lived, the latter married to a Valeria, possibly a woman of aristocrat rank. According to ancient sources, the earliest reference to Tarasis dates back to 464, when he put his hands on some letters written by Aspar's son, Ardaber, which proved that the son of the Magister Militum had incited the Sassanid king to invade Roman territory, promising to support the invasion. Through these letters, which Tarasis gave to Leo, the emperor could dismiss Ardaber, who at the time was Magister Militum per Orientum and Patricius, thus reducing Aspar's influence and ambition. As reward for his loyalty, which Leo praised to Daniel the Stylite, Tarasis was appointed comes domesticorum, an office of great influence and prestige. This appointment could mean that Tarasis had been a protector domesticus, either at Leo's court in Constantinople, or attached at Ardaber's staff in Antioch. In 465, Leo and Aspar quarreled about the appointment of consuls for the following year. It was on this occasion that Tarasis's position was strengthened, as he became friend and ally of the emperor. <laughs> Son in law of Leo I To make himself more acceptable to the Roman hierarchy and the population of Constantinople, Tarasis adopted the Greek name of Zeno and used it for the rest of his life. In mid-late 466, Zeno married Ariadne, elder daughter of Leo I and Verena, as there is no reference to him divorcing Arcadia, she likely died prior to this. 
The next year their son was born, and Zeno became father of the heir apparent to the throne, as the only son of Leo I had died in his infancy. To stress his claim to the throne, the boy was called Leo. Zeno, however, was not present at the birth of his son, as in 467, he participated in a military campaign against the Goths. Zeno, as member of the Protectors Domestici, did not take part in the disastrous expedition against the Vandals, led in 468 by Leo's brother-in-law Basiliscus. The following year, during which he held the honour of the consulate, he was appointed Magister Militum per Thracias and led an expedition in Thrace. The sources do not clearly state what enemy he fought there, and historians had proposed either Goths or Huns, or the rebels of Anagostes. Either way, before leaving, Leo and Zeno asked for Daniel the Stylite's opinion about the campaign, and Daniel answered that Zeno would be the target of a conspiracy but would escape unharmed. Indeed, Leo sent some of his personal soldiers with Zeno to protect him, but they were bribed by Aspar to capture him instead. Zeno was informed of their intention and fled to Serdica, and, because of this episode, Leo grew even more suspicious of Aspar. After the attack, Zeno did not return to Constantinople, where Aspar and Ardaber were, still with considerable power. Instead, he moved to the Long Wall, the Long Wall of the Thracian Chersonese or, less probably, the Anastasian Wall, then to Pylae and from there to Chalcedon. While waiting here for an opportunity to return to the capital, he was appointed Magister Militum per Orientum. He took the monk Peter the Fuller with him and left for Antioch, his offices see, passing through Isauria, where he put down the rebellion of Indicus. Zeno stayed at Antioch for two years. While living in Antioch with his family, Zeno sympathized with the Monophysite views of Peter the Fuller, and supported him against his opponent, the Chalcedonian bishop Martyrius. Zeno allowed the arrival in Antioch of monks from nearby monasteries who increased the number of Peter's followers, and did not effectively repress their violence. Martyrius went to Constantinople to ask Leo for help, but, on returning to Antioch, he was informed that Peter had been elected bishop, and resigned 470. Leo reacted by ordering Peter into exile and addressing to Zeno a law that forbade the monks from leaving their monasteries or fomenting rebellion the 1st of June 471. In 470-471, Zeno had also to deal with an invasion of Zani, who attacked Roman Armenia, with Zeno far from Constantinople. Aspar had increased his influence by having his son Patricius appointed Caesar and married to Leo I's younger daughter, Leontia 470. Sources are contradictory on the causes, but clearly state that in 471, Leo I had Aspar and Ardaber treacherously killed. This certainly occurred with Zeno's and Basiliscus's approval, as, on the eve of the murders, the two generals had moved closer to Constantinople Zeno was at Chalcedon. Thereafter, Zeno returned to Constantinople and was appointed Magister Militum Presentalis. Reign First reign and Basiliscus's revolt 475 to 476 On the 25th of October 473 Leo I appointed as Caesar his grandson Leo II the son of Zeno and Ariadne On the 18th of January 474 Leo I died if Leo II had not already been proclaimed co-emperor by his grandfather he would have become Augustus on that occasion since Leo II was seven years old too young to rule himself Ariadne and her mother Verena prevailed upon him to crown Zeno, his father, as co-emperor, which he did on 9 February 474. When Leo II became ill and died, Zeno became sole emperor. Zeno had to settle matters with the Vandal king, Genseric, who was conducting raids against the empire's coastal cities, threatening key commercial sea routes. Zeno sent Genseric a high-ranking officer as ambassador, Severus, who succeeded in stipulating an eternal peace between the Vandals and the Empire, which allowed the Romans to pay ransoms for the prisoners in Vandal hands and which ended the Vandal persecution of Orthodox Christians in their territory. Despite this success, Zeno continued to be unpopular with the people and Senate because of his barbarian origins. His right to the throne was limited to his marriage with Ariadne and his relationship to Verena, the Dowager Empress. Therefore, he chose to draw support from the Isaurian component of the army, in particular, the Isaurian generals Illus and Trocundas, both brothers. 
However, Verena decided to overthrow her son in law Zeno and replace him with her lover, the ex magister officiorum Patricius, with the help of her brother Basiliscus. The conspirators fomented riots in the capital against the Isaurian emperor. Basiliscus succeeded also in convincing Illus, Trocundas, and the Ostrogothic general Theodoric Strabo to join the plot. In January 475, Zeno was forced to flee Constantinople to Isauria with his wife and mother, some Isaurian fellows and the imperial treasure. Illus and Trocundas were sent to chase him, and Zeno was compelled to shut himself up in a fortress, where Illus besieged him, capturing also Zeno's brother, Longinus and keeping him as an hostage, however, the conspirators quickly fell in conflict with each other. Basiliscus took the throne for himself, putting to death Varina's lover and candidate, Patricius. He also allowed the mob to kill all of the Isaurians left in Constantinople, an episode that damaged relations with the Isaurian generals Illus and Trocundus. Basiliscus appointed his nephew Armatus Magister Militum, thus alienating Theodoric Strabo. Since Zeno had left no money, Basiliscus was forced to levy heavy taxes. Finally, he alienated the church by supporting the Monophysites. The people of Constantinople also put the blame on him for a great fire that burned several parts of the city. With the secret support of the Senate, and bribes paid by Zeno, Illus agreed to switch sides and united his army with Zeno's, marching on Constantinople. Basiliscus tried to recover popular support and sent another army against Zeno, under his nephew Armatus's command. Zeno succeeded in bribing Armatus too, promising to confirm his rank of Magister Militum Presentalis for life and promoting his son also called Basiliscus to the rank of Caesar. Armatus's army failed to intercept Zeno's troops during their march on Constantinople, and, without Theodoric Strabo and his army, Basiliscus fled with his family to the Church of Hagia Sophia. In August 476, Zeno besieged Constantinople. The Senate opened the gates of the city to the Isaurian, allowing the deposed emperor to resume the throne. Basiliscus fled to sanctuary in a church, but he was betrayed by the patriarch Acacius and surrendered himself and his family after extracting a solemn promise from Zeno not to shed their blood. Basiliscus and his family were sent to a fortress in Cappadocia, where Zeno had them enclosed in a dry cistern, to die from exposure. After his restoration, Zeno fulfilled his promises, letting Armatus keep his title of Magister Militum Presentalis, possibly even raising him to the rank of Patricius, and appointing his son Basiliscus Caesar in Nicaea, in 477. However, Zeno changed his mind, probably at Illus' instigation, as the latter stood to gain from the fall of Armatus, and ordered Armatus's death. Zeno confiscated all of Armatus's properties, deposed his son Basiliscus, and had him ordained as a priest. The end of the Western Empire The Western Emperor Olybrius died in the autumn of 472. Gundobad, the Western Magister Militum then proclaimed Glycerus, the Comes Domesticorum commander of the Imperial Guard as Western Emperor in Ravenna. Leo I refused to endorse Glycerus and elevated his nephew Julius Nepos to co-emperor for the West in 473. Expecting resistance, Nepos was forced by bad winter weather to delay his voyage until the next year, it was therefore left to Zeno, as Leo's successor, to support Julius Nepos' installation in Ravenna. Nepos arrived in Italy, quickly deposed Glycerus who offered no resistance, and was proclaimed emperor by the Roman Senate in June 474. Julius was on good terms with Zeno, and he even minted coins in the names of Zeno, Leo II, and himself. In August 475, during Basiliscus's reign, while Zeno was in Isauria blocked by Illus' army, Orestes, the Western Magister Militum, revolted, forcing Nepos to flee Italy for Dalmatia. Orestes proclaimed his own son Romulus Augustus emperor, but was unable to gain the allegiance of the remnants of the Western Empire outside of Italy. One year later, while Zeno was entering Constantinople to end Basiliscus's brief usurpation, Romulus and Orestes were overthrown by the chieftain Odoacer. With the support of Odoacer, the Roman Senate sent an envoy to present the imperial insignia to the restored Zeno. They asked Zeno to dissolve the separation of the empire and rule as sole emperor, also, to appoint Odoacer both patricius and official imperial governor of Italy. At the same time, Zeno received another embassy, sent by Julius Nepos, who asked Zeno to give him the money and the army he needed to resume his control of Italy. Zeno answered that the Roman Senate should welcome back Julius Nepos, their rightful emperor, and that Odoacer should properly receive the patriciate from Nepos, although he allowed that he would also grant it. 
Odoacer was officially recognized and left in possession of Italy, while Nepos kept his title and the other fragments of the empire's western holdings, but no army. Perhaps in deference to Zeno, Odoacer recognized Nepos' de jure reign in Italy until his death, ruling and even minting coins in his name, but he never allowed his return. After Nepos' assassination in 480, Odoacer invaded Dalmatia to pursue and punish the assassins and also to take Dalmatia for himself. Zeno legitimized Odoacer's authority in Dalmatia. Odoacer recognized Zeno as sole emperor of the again unitary empire, but increasingly started using the title Rex King for himself. Topic: <laughs> Revolt of Marcian 479. Marcian was the son of the Western Roman Emperor Anthemius (467–472) and a grandson of Emperor Marcian (450–457). He had married Ariadne's sister Leontia, and was therefore Zeno's brother-in-law. He was twice consul in 467 and 472. In 479, Marcian tried to overthrow Zeno and claim the throne for himself. With the help of his brothers Procopius Anthemius and Romulus, he gathered in Constantinople troops composed of both citizens and foreigners in the house of Caesarius, south of the Forum of Theodosius, and from there they marched at the same time on the imperial palace and on the house of Illus, who was a supporter of Zeno. The emperor almost fell into the hands of the rebels, who, during the day, overwhelmed the imperial troops, who were also attacked by citizens from the roofs of their houses. During the night, however, Illus moved an Isaurian unit, quartered in nearby Chalcedonia, into Constantinople and also corrupted Marcian's soldiers, who allowed Zeno to flee. The following morning, Marcian, understanding that his situation was desperate and that reinforcements from Theodoric Strabo would not arrive in time, took refuge in the Church of the Holy Apostles, but was arrested with his brothers. Zeno sent Marcian and his brothers to Caesarea in Cappadocia. They tried to flee, but Marcian was captured and obliged to become a monk in Tarsus Cilicia, or imprisoned in Isauria, in the fortress of Papurius. He tried to escape a second time, and this time he succeeded, but, after gathering new troops and attacking Ancyra, he was defeated and captured by Trocundus, Illus' brother. <laughs> Revolt of Illus The commanding position and popular favor of Illus rendered him an object of suspicion, and Zeno in various ways sought to rid himself of him. Also Verena, the dowager empress, plotted against his life. Verena's attempt was unsuccessful, and Zeno, equally jealous of her and of Illus, banished her at the suggestion of the latter, confining her in the fort of Papurius. There is some doubt as to the timing of these events. Candidus places the banishment of Verena before the revolt of Marcion, and Theodore Lecter assigns as the cause of it her share in the revolt of Basiliscus. It is not unlikely, indeed, that this turbulent woman was twice banished, once before Marcion's revolt, for her connection with Basiliscus, and again after Marcion's revolt, for her plot against Illus. From her prison she managed to persuade her daughter Ariadne, the wife of Zeno, to attempt to obtain her release, first from Zeno, and then from Illus, to whom the emperor referred her. Illus refused her request. Ariadne, like her mother, attempted to assassinate Illus. Jordanes ascribes her hatred to another cause. He says that Illus had infused jealous suspicions into Zeno's mind which had led Zeno to attempt to end her life, and that her knowledge of these things stimulated her to revenge. The assassin whom she employed only wounded Illus. The assassin was taken prisoner and Zeno, who appears to have been privy to the affair, was unable to prevent his execution. Illus, with his friend Pamprepius, Leontius and his brother Trocundus, now retired from court. They first went to Nicaea and then, on pretense of change of air and of procuring a cure for his wound, into the east where he was made Magister Militum. Having traversed Asia Minor, they raised the standard of revolt in 484, when Illus declared Leontius emperor. Zeno sent an army to fight them, but Illus won, obtained possession of Papurius, released Verena, and induced her to crown Leontius at Tarsus. In 485 Zeno sent against the rebels a fresh army, said to consist of Macedonians and Scythians Tilmont conjectures, not unreasonably, that these were Ostrogoths under John the Hunchback, or, more probably, John the Scythian, and Theoderic the Amal, who was at this time consul. John defeated the rebels near Seleucia and drove them into the fort of Papurius where he blockaded them. 
After a few months Trocundus died, the fort was taken only after four years of siege, by the treachery of Trocundus's brother-in-law, who had been sent for the purpose from Constantinople by Zeno. Illus and Leontius were beheaded 488 and their heads sent to the emperor. <laughs> Affairs with the Goths 474 The aggressions of the two Ostrogothic leaders, Theoderic the Amal Theoderic the Great, the son of Theodomish and leader of the Mosian Ostrogoths, and Theodoric Strabo, the leader of the Thracian Ostrogoths, had been a constant source of danger since 472. Although Zeno at times contrived to play them off against each other, they in turn were able to profit by his dynastic rivalries. It was only by offering them pay and high command that he kept them from attacking Constantinople itself. At the death of Leo II, Theodoric Strabo rebelled against Zeno. His support was instrumental in overthrowing Zeno and raising Basiliscus to the Byzantine throne 475, but Theodoric and Basiliscus had a falling out, so when Zeno returned to Constantinople in 476 and defeated Basiliscus, Strabo was reported to have not defended the city. In 476-477, Zeno allied himself with Strabo's rival, Theodoric the Amal, and ordered him to attack Strabo. The leader of the Thracian Goths sent an embassy to the emperor, offering peace and blaming the Mosian Theodoric. Zeno understood that this offering was hiding further conspiracies, and convinced the Senate and army to declare Strabo a public enemy. Zeno's plan was to have the two Theodorics attack each other. He sent the Amal against Strabo, who supported the revolt of Marcion, with the promise of a huge Roman force as reinforcement. 478. When Theoderic the Amal arrived through the mountains at Mount Soundes, he did not find the Roman reinforcement army he expected, but instead Theodoric Strabo's army, in a strongly fortified camp. The two Theodorics agreed to put forward a joint request to the emperor, in order to extend to the south the settlement territory of the Ostrogoths in Mosia. Zeno tried to divide the two Theodorics by bribing the Amal, but he refused the bribe. The imperial army obtained some initial successes, but Zeno did not press his advantage, and allowed the Amal to move westward in Thrace, plundering territories as he went. With the Amal far away, Strabo accepted an agreement with Zeno. Strabo was to be given back his wealth, money to pay 13,000 soldiers, the command of two Palatina units, and the title once more of Magister Militum. However, the army of Theodoric Strabo, 30,000 men strong was still a menace for Zeno, who convinced the Bulgars to attack the Thracian Goths in their own base. Strabo defeated the Bulgars in 480-481, and moved towards Constantinople, but he had to deal with problems with his own men, so he could not capitalize upon his victory and was forced to return to Greece. On his way back, he died in an accident. After Theodoric Strabo died in 481, the future Theodoric the Great became king of the entire Ostrogoth nation and continued to be a source of trouble in the Balkan Peninsula. Zeno allied to Theodoric, whom he appointed Magister Militum Presentalis and even consul for the year 484, the first time a barbarian who was not a citizen of the empire reached such a high distinction. Zeno had Theoderic fight against Illus and the usurper Leontius, besieging them at Papurius in 484-488. However, in 486 Theoderic revolted again and attacked Constantinople, severing the city's water supply. Zeno bought a peace and agreed with Theoderic that the Ostrogoths should have gone to invade Italy to fight Odoacer, who had allegedly supported Leontius, and to establish his new kingdom there 487. This all but eliminated the Germanic presence in the east. Topic: <laughs> Promulgation of the Henoticon 482. In religious matters, Zeno is famous for his Henoticon or Act of Union, issued in 482 to mediate between Chalcedonian and Myophysite views about the nature of Christ. The Chalcedonians recognized two natures physis in Christ, the Myophysites only one. The Council of Chalcedon 451 had issued the Chalcedonian Creed and condemned the Myophysite position, but the Myophysites were still strong, especially in the eastern provinces of the empire, and the Patriarch of Alexandria, Peter Mongus, was a Myophysite. Supporting the Myophysites was one of the mistakes made by Basiliscus, as the people of Constantinople were Chalcedonian, but Zeno needed the support of the Myophysite provinces e.g. 
Egypt, Syria, Palestine and Asia Minor. Also, the Patriarch of Constantinople, Acacius, was interested in reducing the distance between the two positions. Therefore, in 482 Zeno issued the Henoticon, a document he had developed with the support of Acacius and addressed to the factions in Egypt. The edict affirmed the Nicene-Constantinopolitan Creed i.e., the Creed of Nicaea completed at Constantinople as affording a common, final and united symbol or expression of faith. All other symbola or mathemata were excluded, Eutyches and Nestorius were unmistakably condemned in an anathema, while the twelve chapters of Cyril of Alexandria were accepted. The teaching of Chalcedon was not so much repudiated as passed over in silence. Jesus Christ was described as the only begotten Son of God. One and not two. And there was no explicit reference to the two natures. The Bishop of Rome, Pope Felix III, refused to accept the document and excommunicated Acacius, 484, thus beginning the Acacian Schism, which lasted until 519. In 488, the Patriarch of Antioch, Peter the Fuller, came to Constantinople to have his right to the Church of Cyprus confirmed. Zeno called the Bishop of Cyprus, Anthemius, to answer the accusations. The bishop claimed that before his departure, he had had a vision of St. Barnabas, in which the position of the tomb of the Apostle had been revealed to him. In the tomb, Anthemius had found the relics of the Apostle and a copy of the Gospel of Matthew written in Hebrew by Barnabas himself. Zeno received the relics and the manuscript, and in exchange he proclaimed the autonomy of the Church of Cyprus. In 489, Zeno closed the Persian school of Edessa, Mesopotamia, by request of Bishop Cyrus II of Edessa, because it promoted Nestorian teachings, and built a church in its place. The school relocated to its original home of Nisibis, becoming again the school of Nisibis, and leading to a wave of Nestorian immigration into Persia. Topic. Suppressing the Samaritan Revolt 484. According to Samaritan sources, Zeno whom the sources call Zate the King of Edom, persecuted the Samaritans. The emperor went to Sichem Neapolis, gathered the elders and asked them to convert. When they refused, Zeno had many Samaritans killed, and converted the synagogue to a church. Zeno then took for himself Mount Gerizim, where the Samaritans worshipped God, and built several edifices, among which a tomb for his recently deceased son, on which he put a cross, so that the Samaritans, worshipping God, would prostrate in front of the tomb. According to these same sources, Zeno was buried on Mount Gerizim. Later, in 484, the Samaritans revolted. The rebels attacked Sichem, burnt five churches built on Samaritan holy places and cut off the fingers of Bishop Terebinthus, who was officiating the ceremony of Whitson. They elected a justa or justicia, justices, as their king and moved to Caesarea, where a significant Samaritan community lived. Here several Christians were killed and the Church of St. Sebastian was destroyed. Justa celebrated the victory with games in the circus. According to John Malalas, the Dukes Palestina Aslepiades, whose troops were reinforced by the Caesarea-based Arcadiani of Regis, defeated Justa, killed him and sent his head to Zeno. According to Procopius of Caesarea, Terebinthus went to Zeno to ask for revenge. The emperor personally went to Samaria to quell the rebellion. Modern historians believe that the order of the facts preserved by Samaritan sources should be inverted, as the persecution of Zeno was a consequence of the rebellion rather than its cause, and should have happened after 484, around 489. Zeno rebuilt the Church of St. Procopius in Neapolis Sitchum, and the Samaritans were banned from Mount Gerizim, on whose top a signaling tower was built to alert in case of civil unrest. <laughs> <laughs> Death and succession Zeno died on 9 April 491, of dysentery or of epilepsy, after ruling for 17 years and two months. No sons were to succeed him. Leo had died in 474, Zenon, the first son, in his youth, while living at court. Ariadne then chose a favored member of the imperial court, Anastasius, to succeed Zeno, whose brother Longinus revolted, starting the Isaurian War. According to a popular legend recorded by two ancient historians, Zeno was buried alive after becoming insensible due to drinking or an illness. He called for help, but Ariadne did not allow anyone to open the sarcophagus. In popular culture 
Zeno was a player of table tabula, a game nearly identical to modern backgammon. Table is still used to refer to backgammon in Greece. In 480 he had a hand that was so unlucky that he wrote an epigram to record it. Agathias reproduced it half a century later and this allowed the game to be reconstructed in the 19th century. Zeno, who was white, had a stack of seven checkers, three stacks of two checkers and two blots, checkers that stand alone on a point and are therefore in danger of being put outside the board by an incoming opponent checker. Zeno threw the three dice with which the game was played and obtained two, five and six. As in backgammon, Zeno could not move to a space occupied by two opponent black pieces. The white and black checkers were so distributed on the points that the only way to use all of the three results, as required by the game rules, was to break the three stacks of two checkers into blots, thus exposing them to capture and ruining the game for Zeno. Zeno is the protagonist of a theatrical drama in Latin, called Zeno, composed c. 1641 by the Jesuit playwright Joseph Simons and performed in 1643 in Rome at the Jesuit English College. An anonymous Greek drama is modeled on this Latin Zeno, belonging to the so-called Cretan theater. This version was written and performed at Zakynthos in 1682-83 and has Zeno buried alive and his brother Longinus executed. The play Romulus the Great 1950, by Friedrich Dürrenmatt, has Zeno as one of its characters. The plot is loosely based on history, here Zeno flees to Italy and tries to convince Romulus Augustulus to unite their forces and fight together, but his plan fails. Durinmat's Zeno is an emperor oppressed by the Byzantine ceremonial. See also List of Byzantine emperors Topic Notes Topic Bibliography Topic Primary Sources The events of Zeno's reign are quite obscure, only one continuous account of his reign has been preserved, by Evagrius Scholasticus, in his Historia Ecclesiastica chapter 3. Other sources are Life of Daniel the Stylite Suda Cedrinus, A Concise History of the World Malchus, Byzantiaca John Malalas, Chronographia Procopius of Caesarea, De Aedificis Theophanes the Confessor, Chronicle Joannes Zoneras, Epitome Historiarum Topic. Secondary sources For a scholarly study of Emperor Zeno's religious policy, see Rafal Kaczynski, The Emperor Zeno, Religion and Politics, Vol. 6 of Byzantina et Slavica Krakowiencia, Historia Iagelonica, 2010, ISBN 8362261188 for a discussion of recent scholarship on the life of Zeno until Aspar's death, see Brian Croke, Dynasty and Ethnicity, Emperor Leo and the Eclipse of Aspar. Chiron 35 2005, 147-203, an account of the reign of Zeno after the fall of the Western Roman Empire, see Stephen Williams and J. G. P. Friel, The Rome That Did Not Fall, The Survival of the East in the Fifth Century, CRC Press, 1999, ISBN 0-203-98231-2, Religious Policy of Zeno. Ostrogorsky, George, 1956. History of the Byzantine State. Oxford, Basil Blackwell. Mayendorf, John Imperial Unity and Christian Divisions, The Church 450–680 AD. The Church in History. 2. Crestwood, N.Y., St. Vladimir's Seminary Press. ISBN 978-0-88-141056-3. Topic. External links Media related to Flavius Zeno at Wikimedia Commons